Hello everybody. I'm Emma Hayes. I'm Managing Director of Digital Build Consultants. I'm a chartered architectural technologist and a graduate of architectural technology from TU Dublin. I've been asked to talk about how I got to here in my career. I have over 20 years experience in the AEC industry, but there are some key milestones that have informed decisions and led me to where I am now. So let's start at the beginning, and I promise I won't go through every year of my 20 plus years experience, but we'll try to highlight some influential moments. After graduating with a diploma in architectural technology in 1997, I went to New York on a J1 working visa where I worked for SPLM Architects in Greenwich Village. This was a great opportunity to experience the industry in another country, and I think highlights how transferable our qualification is, and also how well recognised it is internationally. When I returned from New York, I worked for various architectural practices, including the controversial architect Sam Stevenson, who some of you may know. My role developed throughout my career from junior architectural technologist to the architectural lead on major construction projects with an international multidiscipline design, construction and project management organisation, PM Group. As the architectural lead, I was responsible for coordinating the preparation of planning, fire safety, detailed design, tender and construction drawings, along with contract documentation and specifications, and also construction site support. I've worked in many different uh, areas of the construction sector, such as mission critical data centres, energy, food processing, pharma, biopharma, medtech, healthcare, residential, commercial and retail. In 2007, I saw an opportunity to start a business providing architectural technology consultancy support for companies who needed to outsource architectural work packages. Starting this business gave me the flexibility to also lecture part-time on the architectural technology course in Bolton Street. And I really enjoyed being involved with my alma mater again. So in 2010, I returned to Bolton Street for further study. I was part of a pilot cohort of AT graduates with industry experience who were given an opportunity to study for a further year part-time for a BSc in architectural technology. I graduated in 2011 with a first class honours. This is a key milestone in my career as I got my first taste of building information modelling. Maliki Matthews introduced us to Revit and BIM processes. I was convinced then that BIM was the future of the built environment and this revelation was pivotal to the direction my career took. Right at this time, I was providing architectural technology consultancy services to PM Group, who were just starting their BIM journey. Because of my experience with BIM on the BSc, I was given the opportunity to lead an in-house team to trial and pilot BIM processes within the organisation. The more involved in BIM adoption and implementation I got, the more convinced I was that this was going to be a game changer for the industry. So in 2013, I started a part-time distance learning MSc in BIM management through Middlesex University in London. I also received an academic excellence scholarship to attend the course, which I believe was on the back of my BSc from Bolton Street. Interestingly, my research dissertation was on the virtual interaction of BIM project teams, where I investigated remote working for globally dispersed teams. This has never been more topical than it is now with the global pandemic and the need for people to work from home. This research led me to present at the International Congress of Architectural Technology in Alicante and also the CETA BIM gathering. At this time, I was also promoted to Group BIM Manager in PM Group, where I was responsible for the de development and group-wide implementation of the organisational BIM strategy across their network of 18 offices in Europe, Asia and the US for over 2,500 staff. In 2018 then, I decided to set up my own BIM consultancy, Digital Build Consultants. We provide guidance and support to clients, design consultants, contractors and building product manufacturers on all aspects of BIM, such as adoption planning, implementation strategy, gap analysis and training, processes and standards, BIM project tendering and bid support, and also BIM project execution. 
were recognised by Enterprise Ireland as approved BIM consultants, providing support to their clients on their BIM adoption journey. And these are some of the clients that we've worked with over the years. As I'm sure you can see, I'm extremely passionate about the industry-wide adoption of BIM and digital construction processes. And so I volunteer my time with various organisations who are driving BIM adoption in the industry. Some of these are as the regional lead for Ireland for Women in BIM, where we mentor and support the development of women's careers in BIM and encourage women into the construction industry. We're always looking for both men and women to join, so if anybody's interested uh, to join Women in BIM, that would be great. I'm also chair of an SME group who are advising the Department of Enterprise and Public Expenditures Construction Sector Group for Innovation and Digital Adoption. I'm a non-executive director of the Construction IT Alliance, who are a not-for-profit organisation driving the digital transition of the Irish construction industry. And for the last three years, I've been a judge for the Irish Construction Excellence Awards. I also get to share my BIM knowledge and experience by lecturing on the BIM Masters courses in TU Dublin and Middlesex University in London. So what's next for me? I'm in the process of applying to become a Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Architectural Technologists. I've had many opportunities throughout my career, and I truly believe that being an architectural technologist has given me the agility and the skills to really become involved in many different aspects of the construction industry. I believe there are exciting opportunities that lie ahead for all of you as AT graduates. It has been widely researched and documented that the construction industry is less efficient than other industries like manufacturing. But I think innovation is driving change in our industry. Albert Einstein said, you can't solve a problem on the same level that it was created. You have to rise above it to the next level. So what impact can you as graduate architectural technologists have on the construction industry to help us rise above our problems and what are the main factors driving innovation in construction? I recently read a research paper by Blaise and Manley who identified six primary factors which drive innovation in construction. They are clients, structure of production, industry relationships, procurement systems, regulations and standards, and organisational resources such as people. I'd like to add an additional one to that list, global external factors. But let's start with clients. They can identify specific requirements for a project, whether it's prescribing the use of innovative products or methods of construction to achieve their goals, such as improved building performance, higher quality standards and faster project delivery. Clients demanding building information modelling, digital construction processes and lean project delivery are also driving change in the industry and encouraging a digital transition. Another factor which at one time may have hindered innovation but is now incentivising change is the structure of production. In the past, the one-off nature of our building projects limited the application of innovation practices on multiple projects, reducing the incentive to innovate. Yet I'm now seeing the use of modular and prefabricated off-site construction for projects, resulting in time and cost saving and improved quality. And due to their modular nature, they can be repeated on multiple projects. This is very evident in mission critical data center projects, where the use of modular units such as UPS and open skids are gaining efficiencies from standardization in design, repeatable prefab modular construction, and limited on-site work. This is driving the industry to improve design, productivity, safety, quality, materials, and maintenance. Industry changes are also due to more collaborative relationships between designers, constructors, manufacturers, and vendors, which have a huge influence on innovation in the industry. Collaboration between these stakeholders encourages idea sharing and knowledge transfer, resulting in more innovative solutions, such as development of technology, improved building products, and better processes. The adoption of BIM, digital construction, modular offsite construction, and lean project controls are only possible when robust procurement systems are adopted. 
This is resulting in innovative procurement methods driving these changes in our industry. Collaborative, integrated, shared risk and reward practices are encouraging cooperation between all project stakeholders and allowing for the early involvement of key players, resulting in more timely decision making. These practices have benefits for the overall delivery of the projects, for the client, project teams and the user. Along with procurement systems, government policies and adoption of standards can influence the need for innovative solutions. An example of this can be seen with the 2016 UK Government Mandate for BIM on all government projects. This policy is driving improvements in project delivery and more importantly ensuring the UK Government can more efficiently manage their asset portfolio. This, along with other private sector drivers, has encouraged the industry to respond with a digital twin solution. As some of you know, a digital twin is a virtual model of a building that collects real-world information about the structure via sensors, drones and other wireless technology. Data collected from the digital twins also inform innovation into the future as it provides a vast amount of information about our projects such as performance, cost, schedule, constructability and health and safety. In the future, this data can be mined and analysed by artificial intelligence to allow the industry make informed decisions about future projects. Very hard to talk about innovation in construction without mentioning how an entire industry's way of working was greatly changed overnight with the countrywide lockdown earlier this year and the current level five restrictions to try to halt the spread of COVID-19. Rigorous site safety measures and more widespread adoption of di digital construction processes, in particular remote collaborative working, has demonstrated how proactive and agile our industry can be to rise above a problem. I believe remote or virtual teams in particular will become more normal for projects. This ability to work remotely and to continue to collaborate on projects gives the Irish construction industry opportunities to compete in a global economy. It gives us the tools and the expertise to deliver building projects faster and at more competitive cost by utilising geographically di dispersed teams with different expertise or from low cost centres throughout our network. BIM will also play an important role in this global shift to virtual teams as it allows stakeholders to simultaneously input data into, our central, into a central repository from different locations. Adopting international standards such as ISO 19650 for information management will allow us work consistently across jurisdictions, giving us opportunities to export expertise and share knowledge globally on projects. Lastly, the industry is only as good as the people working in it. Innovation comes from encouraging and supporting our people to have a culture of innovation where thinking outside the box and not being afraid of failure allows us to thrive and drive our industry forward. Support from industry and recognition of innovative thinking highlighted by recognition like the Moy AT Scholarship ensures that you as an architectural technology graduate coming out into industry will keep innovating into the future and drive change so we can rise above problems and bring our industry to the next level. Thank you and best of luck to all of you.